What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name is Michael Roman, aka All Fires. Now, if you missed our last update about the second unofficial trailer for Deadpool and Wolverine, we actually know now because of the source trailer track that's been tracking trailers for almost a decade when it's supposed to drop, and that's in the beginning of May. Now, if you're bummed that it's five or six weeks away still at this point, don't be, because that's when the finale of X-Men 97 is going to drop, and because it's killing it at Disney Plus right now, it makes a lot of sense for Disney and Marvel to double up on the marketing, and then the Silver Line is once it drops in May, it's going to be nothing but Deadpool and Wolverine for the rest of the summer until it releases at the end of July. Well, today we have some major, major updates about that trailer, who we can expect to see, two characters revealed in full that weren't shown but for a glimpse in the first trailer. We also are now getting a report about where a majority of Deadpool and Wolverine is set. And while we might have guessed this from the trailer and some of the behind the scenes footage, I think it really recontextualizes the entire plot of the film and what we can expect from Deadpool and Wolverine. We're breaking it all down, the latest reveals, but first, if you could grab the subscribe button. We do daily Marvel content at the channel and that's all we do. Everything from official Easter egg breakdowns, trailers and reviews to the occasional industry insider report and everything in between so if that sort of thing's for you hit the subscribe button leave a comment down below that will automatically enter you to win our ongoing ps5 giveaway the next one is right around the corner to coincide with the finale of x-men 97 if you want to be entered to win again all you got to do be a sub leave a comment if you want stick around at the end of the video we get into all the giveaway stuff again there okay so before we jump into the industry insider report which we will issue the lightest of spoiler warning for we're going to start with the rumor mill stuff now during the very first trailer we only got a quick glimpse at both wolverine in the yellow and blue costume and Cassandra Nova, the film's antagonist. And when you think about it, there was actually some similarities behind the reveal. They're literally just on camera from the shoulders up for a second, and then it fades out. Well, it's being reported again in the rumor mill now that we're going to get a full look at both of those characters. Wolverine in the yellow and blue costume will feature during the trailer, as well as a full look at the antagonist Cassandra Nova, played by Emma Corrin. Now, the Industry Insider update that came from Can We Get Some Toast, who is a trusted industry insider and Twitter scoopster that we've been reporting on confidently here at the channel for years, who has a proven track record, has just recently released the statement that 70 to 75% of the entire film, Deadpool and Wolverine, takes place in the void. Now, this is where I will issue the lightest of spoiler warning, as I'm going to continue to do now in videos going forward when I use behind the scenes footage. So if you want to back out now and not see any of this, go into the unknown, not knowing. Now's your last chance. But a majority of the footage that we watched from behind the scenes stuff that leaked out shows them outside and sort of traversing what looks like it could be extensions of the void. Deadpool and Wolverine walking through the field. Of course, Deadpool, Dogpool, a separate variant of Deadpool and Wolverine talking on the hill with the blue sky and all of the scenes that leaked out of them fighting in the void against old Fox X-Men characters and against each other. Now, I will also point out that the quick shot that we get of both Wolverine in the yellow and blue costume and of Cassandra Nova also both look like that they're inside the void. So it may be that ultimately Deadpool ends up there and then just ends up fighting and recruiting whomever he comes across. But I think it's a lot more likely that that is his actual intended destination as that's probably where Cassandra Nova has taken up in a sort of attempt to delete timelines and or conquer the multiverse. Think about it, especially if she's deleted her own timeline. It's a great place to take refuge while you're destroying the multiverse because technically, quote unquote, the void is at the end of time outside of time, right? It's the last spot before you get to the Citadel where he who remains used to reside. So this is ultimately, outside of the timelines, outside of the multiverse, one of the few places that Cassandra Nova could reside if she has found a way to leave and exit the void and then come back to the spot with the power of her telepathy able to open up portals is one of the powers we've heard that is going to be interpolated into what she can do. Again, she's an extremely powerful mutant, so if she's found a way herself to traverse the multiverse and leave the void at will, it would be the perfect spot for her to sort of set up shop while she's outside of the multiverse and deleting timelines. I will also say, as I point out quite often, that trailers do have a tendency, even the first ones, to sort of follow the temporal line of the film, meaning that what we saw in the Deadpool trailer and usually is sort of lined up with the acts of the film, right? The stuff with him in the birthday party, that's obviously act one. The stuff with the TVA, that might be the end of act one and act two. And then towards the end of the trailer, we see it taking place in the void where Wolverine and Deadpool are fighting each other. So if that lines up with the film, and if that's where Cassandra Nova, the main antagonist of the film is, you could anticipate a majority being there and then into the third act. 
but not so fast and I'm gonna go ahead and say straight out this is just speculation. I think there's a better chance and because of the quick teases we got during the first part of the trailer, that Deadpool's first mission in from the TVA is to recruit a variant of Wolverine. I think this is going to go rather poorly and that's why we see versions like Patch and the others we're going to get to see during this like a Henry Cavill variant where he just can't find the right version. I also think that as he goes to try to find these versions of Wolverine, Cassandra Nova will be screwing with him in these timelines and from the void, basically showing up wherever he is and always intercepting and or ruining the plan, which means ultimately Deadpool is going to follow her into the void as she retreats and end up there where he He's going to meet the yellow and blue costume Wolverine that will eventually be our main continuity Wolverine that comes over with Deadpool and into the 616. Speaking of which, I would be remiss in not mentioning my sentiment and since the beginning, one of the most exciting prospects of this film is seeing Deadpool and Wolverine finally interact with the 616 characters and our Avengers. And while it certainly looks a lot more likely now that that's something they'll save for the end of the film, if 70 or 75% of the void is where the film is taking place. I think there's very little time for our main continuity 616 or main Avengers to show up. Not that they might not in some of these other scenes, but I just think there's very little time for that to be a main component of the film. But I feel like there's a lot of the fan base who's super ready to get this going. And so with the promise of Deadpool and Wolverine and from multiple industry insider sources saying how important this film is for Secret Wars, I hope it focuses on events and happenings rather than theories and lore to set that up. I know it's been Marvel's MO to keep it a lot safer with these films and not set up consequences and of course if they just dump a bunch of dialogue explaining things that's a lot easier than impacting the 616 and for good but they already opened up that can of worms with the post credit scene for the Marvels sending Monica Rambeau on a one-way ticket to another multiverse. I don't think it would be totally crazy to have two characters show up in our continuity the same way but sadly I think that's going to be for the end of the film and something we're going to have to wait and see for the future of the MCU. You. And of course, things can't get too crazy for the 616 at the end of this because you still have some major ground level projects like Captain America Brave New World, like Spider-Man whenever we get to it, like the Thunderbolts that won't be multiverse projects. So you can't have huge gaping holes in the sky in an impending incursion because obviously that would sideline whatever's going on with the plots of those films. But you guys let me know all your thoughts down below as always. How hype are you for the second trailer? What do you most want to see from the second trailer? Which characters do you want to see revealed? And what do you think about this scoop that a majority of the film is taking place in the void? I'm all ears as always quickly. Let's get into the giveaway stuff before I let you go. Okay, we're still giving away PlayStation 5s at the channel. and We're just going to continue to do so until the PlayStation 5 Pro comes out. Then we'll start giving those away. In the meantime, if you want to be entered to win or for any of the future giveaways here at the channel, all the same rules will always apply. Hit the subscribe button because you need to be a subscriber, then leave a comment down below. And because it's truly random, the more videos you comment on, the better chance you have of winning. All winners will always be announced during the end of videos in the same segment we're doing here, live with my voice and the comments shown on screen. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on, especially these days with YouTube and them unsubbing people from channels. And of course, if you like today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button. Quick reminder guys to anybody, stay safe and vigilant on YouTube or really any social media platform. If you should get a comment, in the comments claiming that you've won a prize, please try to remember that anybody can take a content creator's photo, make a new account, claim to be that content creator, and it is all just a scam to try to get you to pay for shipping for a prize that doesn't exist. If you should get a comment like that, simply report that comment to the respective platform. Never ever share your information on a third party app like WhatsApp or Telegram. And please try to remember again, no content creator is ever gonna charge you for shipping. They're not gonna hit you up in the comments. That is just spam. They have left our channel alone for the better part of a year, but they have been targeting some of my friends' channels. And so really, just a PSA, YouTube, any social media platform, anywhere, please guys, be skeptical, be safe. If you should get a comment like that, just report it to the respective platform. My name is Michael Roman. You can find me in a couple of places, Instagram and Twitter at I'm Fires. You can also find me on Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, Apple, iTunes, wherever you listen to original music under the name All Fires. And while I sincerely appreciate you checking my music out, thanks for checking this channel out. Stick around. We'll be posting again real, real soon.